Okay, uh, I think we're streaming out live. Yep, looks like we're looks like we're going out. Um, let me just check a couple of quick things. Yep, looks good. Uh, all right, so uh, just going to be uh, drawn a little bit tonight. I uh, thought I would live stream it in case anybody wanted to drop in and uh, just kind of see what I'm doing and what I'm working on and ask any, any kind of questions. So um, let's get to it. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I'm going to be drawn in... Uh, Sketchable tonight, so I've got Sketchable here um, in front of me, and uh, I think I'm going to draw this this picture of uh, of Christopher Plummer. Um, he's got a very uh, unique look, uh, challenging uh, in the shapes and different things that that uh, we would see. So um, I'm going to see if I can pull this off. I don't know if I'll get the likeness right. I don't know if I'll get, uh, by the time it's done, I don't know if it'll look like Christopher Plummer, but I'm going to give it a shot and see what we can do. Um, I'm not going to leave this reference up all the time. I'll switch back and forth to it. If you want to see it, if you're watching live and you want to see the reference, just ping me in the chat and I'll, I'll pop it back up. Um, but I'm going to turn it off because it, it will kind of cover some of the tools inside Sketchable. So if you're if you're here to kind of figure out, you know, how to work with Sketchable or how to work with a, a digital drawing, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to cover up any of the tools and make them, make them seem, uh, like they're hidden in any way. I'd like you to see the whole process. So, uh, I'll just switch that off from time to time and then we'll get to it. So, uh, like I said, if you're, uh, if you're watching live, feel free to drop any questions or comments in the live chat. Um, if you're joining us uh, on YouTube, uh, welcome. This is uh, some of the few times that I actually do live streams on YouTube. Most of the time, my live streams are over on my Patreon page. Uh, you can check that out uh, by by clicking on a link here in my in my channel, or I'll post it down below after the live stream is over. Um, and if you're joining us on Patreon, welcome. Thank you for being a subscriber. I appreciate your support. And hopefully uh, you get value out of this little sketching session and maybe learn a thing or two while, you, while you're doing it. Um, if you, again, have any questions that you want me to go into more detail about, you can feel free to post those over on the Patreon page and I'll, I'll go through those and, and, and try to answer. So uh, for anybody that's watching on YouTube, since I don't stream to YouTube all that often, um, Everything sounding okay? Everything look okay? Anything uh, seem a little out of the ordinary? Uh, pop something in the chat there and let me know how it's going. Um, so let's get started. Um, first, let's set up our tools. Uh, I don't need my eraser to be quite this big. So I'm going to size it down a little bit because I want to work with it a little smaller. I'm not going to get super small right at the beginning, but you know, uh, we'll set that. Uh, thank you, Natalie. Thanks for letting me know that that's, uh, that sounded good. I appreciate that. Um, set up a pencil. So I got my pencil tool here. Um, there's a couple ways you can work with a pencil tool. You can actually set up pencils just like their real life counterparts. So you can have a 2B, a 4B, a 6B, all of that kind of stuff, and you can give them names. So if you look down here, these little, these little circles are all different presets that I've set up. Um, and you can, you can set those up yourself and give them your own little names and whatever you want to do. But what I tend to do is I have set up pencils and I, and I do that often, but what I tend to do is actually... Um, kind of pick one pencil and then I lower the opacity uh, by bringing the the flow down. Um, and you've got a couple of things. You've got you've got stroke opacity over here, and then you've got flow over here. The flow uh, you can kind of think of flow as like how much paint or how much pigment this particular tool is actually going to put down on the canvas. 
Um, and then you can think opacity of like how opaque is it when it puts it on the canvas, if that makes sense. Um, so there's a couple of, there's a couple of different combinations of those things to kind of get the line quality that you want. Um, but it, it, it just depends on, on how you want to approach it. I usually adjust the flow over here and I usually bring that down fairly low and then I'll, I'll play with, with how my, uh, my stroke width or size is from there. That allows me to like, if I have the flow really high, I'm going to get a fairly dark line, even without pressure. So like this is with hardly no pressure. This is max pressure on my, on my drawing tablet. Um, in contrast, if I bring the flow down, well, maybe I should have made that eraser a little bit larger just for the sake of time. Um, if I bring the flow down, let's just say like this, this is no pressure and this is max pressure. Right, so I can kind of build up over time, depending on the pressure, and not get too dark too fast. Does that make sense? So um, that's kind of how I'll 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 kind of adjust my tool uh, to make sure that I can work kind of light and then build up value as I start to build out the sketch. So um, and I feel like I'm rambling and talking a little bit much. So I'm just going to go right into to do in this drawing and you guys pop your questions in the chat if you have any and I'll be happy to try to give them an answer. Okay, so um, let me pop up the reference for this portion real quick. Uh, and let's try to block this out a little bit. All right, so he's got a certain amount of space above the head. So that's going to kind of land in here and then about three quarters of the way down the drawing, maybe ish somewhere in here is the chin. And then the width, the width of the eyes is about here. Now that's not the width of the head, but the width of the eyes. So like here to here, and then this piece comes back like so. It's kind of got this shape. All right, and then the neck is somewhere in here. Let's see, Natalie's got a question. Uh, are you going to keep the coat on him? I ask because I would be tempted to remove it, but I wouldn't be able to come up with a replacement shirt. Um, that's a that's a good question. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I intend to draw the coat or all of the clothing. And then later, uh, for lack of a better explanation, I kind of get lazy and decide I don't really want to draw it. Uh, but my intention tonight is to keep keep the coat if possible. And sometimes I won't draw it a, a ton of detail. I'll just uh, kind of, you know, sh quickly shade it in uh, just to indicate that it's there. So let's see, that coat comes back here. It kind of drops off here somewhere. And does that. And then over here... Okay. Um, if you've ever worked with Sketchable, sometimes these things can get in the way, the tools. So there's actually this little triangle down here that you can tap on and it makes all your tools go away. So you can kind of get them out of your way while you sketch. Uh, it's very helpful in my opinion. All right. So this is the point where if you're drawing this we're not looking for 100 accuracy but what we are looking for is to see that everything is kind of in in proportion and in the correct scale um i'm not going to try to replicate this 100 but i want to try to get it as close as i possibly can so this is the time to make 
adjustments to the sketch and, and kind of adjust where things land. Um, okay, so his eyebrows kind of hit across here, and that is kind of the top of the ear as well, it looks like. His eyes are on a slight downward slope, so let's adjust for that. And the ear lives, so his nose is like here. All right, so I gotta figure out, I gotta figure out if we've got this into thirds. So that is one measurement. There's the other. So that's roughly thirds. It's probably not precise, but roughly thirds. Mouth is somewhere in here. Uh, so this will be top of the eyebrows. This is uh, roughly the bottom of the nose. And then the mouth will live somewhere in this space down here. Which means the ear hits just above the bottom of the nose, which is in this space here. So I might have this either too low or this coat too high. I'm going with the coat being too high. Okay, so there's uh, there's uh, kind of this shape to the head here. It's going to do the same thing over there. And that's going to add to and then we've got to bring this down about like so like so all right we've got another another question is this a layer you keep and add to or is this a layer you turn off late in the sketch well it depends if i'm if i'm doing a painting if i'm doing like a digital painting i will i will draw on this layer and then i'll start other layers on top um for most of the time when i'm doing sketches like this i will actually stay on this sketch layer until it's complete um, and I'll show you a little bit later how I kind of switch back and forth between the pencil and the eraser and the airbrush and all and the kind of blending tools and all kinds of things to kind of get rid of this underlying drawing. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think we have this shape or this base layer more or less established. So I think I could be wrong. That's the beauty of working in digital. It gives you the luxury of being wrong a way more often than you'd have uh, in traditional media. So, um, so I've drawn the head here, but I have not drawn where the hair would live on this, this shape. So don't think that this is the full measurement. The hair will come out here somewhere along with a little bit more of the ear that ear doesn't seem like it sticks out quite far enough but i'll i'll keep correcting that as i go along uh, and we've got some hair that kind of comes up into this space it's not very not very thick on the top of the head so it's not going to add too much dimension there And then there's a little bit of hair that comes out here. Um, so I don't worry too much about like trying to establish like where the eyes come in and out um, and all of that kind of stuff. Right now, I'm basically just worried about where all this stuff lands. Ish, roughly. Rough, rough um, measurements. And... Uh, I know you can't see me because I'm drawing digitally, but I am using a stylus. So I'm, I'm working with a pen on a digital 
digital touch screen. Um, but I also do not look at the drawing that much. I'm looking mostly at my, uh, my reference material. So I'm not uh, spending a ton of time looking down at the drawing, trying to figure out where all this stuff goes. All right, so down in here is the bottom of the nose, and this is starting to just look creepy. And see, this is the part when I was uh, when I was less experienced and didn't practice enough, practice a lot. This is the part where I would give up. I would say, "Oh, I've totally, I've totally this this whole drawing sucks. I need to give up now because I'm never going to get it right." Um, and I can tell you that's the wrong thing to do. That is absolutely the wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is keep pushing through it um, and making adjustments uh, so that you can get everything the way it needs to be. Okay, so uh, here's where my process differs from a lot of other people. A lot of other people would continue to work small details and get everything right. Um, and I just don't work that way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my pencil really kind of large, like in here, and I am just going to start to define the big masses of shadow and where they land. I find that if I can define where these shadow shapes live and kind of how they impact the structure of the face, then it's much easier for me to make adjustments and get a likeness. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, this is why we turn off our tools because it doesn't do weird things like that. And I'm not so worried at this point about detail. I'm just worried about where, where do these shadows live? How big are they? What kind of sweep and form do they take? And then I can look at these shadows later and make the determination as to whether or not they're too big or too small or the wrong shape. So as I look at my reference, I start to, I start to ask myself, what does that shadow look like? Uh, and where does it lie? And how does it interconnect with another shadow? And where does that one lie? And how long is that shadow? And then there's another shadow here and it comes up like this. And he's looking very much like a comic book character at this point. And then this whole ear is basically just in shadow. So I'm going to, just kind of work that in. This is the scary part. This is the part where you might get it right and you might not. But honestly, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is all part of learning and becoming better at uh, the process overall. Okay, so here's where we start to build the forms. So if you look at uh, the face right through here on the reference, there's like a highlight that lands right in here. So there's two things we can do here. We can grab the eraser and we can start drawing in that highlight, or we can actually grab a shade of gray I don't ever like to use pure white. It just doesn't look right. It looks too stark. Um, unless, unless I'm trying to do like water or anything wet, I don't like to use pure white. So 
I, I tend to grab some shade of gray in here and that's calling it tan. So let's make sure we got a pure gray and no yellow in there. Um, and then I will literally start to come back in with that gray and build up the highlight planes. And I will go back and forth like this until the drawing starts to look like something that it should look like. I think this just a little bit smaller for this color. So, now I'm going to kind of break down the nose by basic geometry. I'm not going to worry about that nostril right now. I'm just going to worry about where is the basic geometry of his nose and what does it look like. It's kind of right in here and we'll fix those nostrils in a bit. Let's see, the lack of patience you mentioned that you used to have is very much my issue. I lose faith in myself so fast and I convince myself I should just give up now and I do. Yeah, that's a thing that plagues a lot of people and it plagued me for a very, very long time to the point that I didn't even, I, I just wouldn't even try to finish my pieces. I just wouldn't. And so I, 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 you just kind of have to convince yourself that you can, you can make this better because you can the more you work it, uh, in some, some cases, the more you work it, the worse it gets. But in other cases, the more you work it, the more you learn. And when you learn, you can get better. And when you get better, each piece will be better, if that makes sense. All right. So I can tell already that I am a little out of whack on the proportions down here and up here. Uh, these aren't, this isn't tall enough and this isn't long enough for the height of the face that I've made here. Um, so I'm just gonna keep, keep making these adjustments. Part of that is because I don't have the uh, I don't have the jowls quite right just yet. Okay, let's go back to a slightly larger brush. We can block this in a little quicker. All right, so there's a lot of light on this side of the face, a lot of shadow on this side of the face, but there are some pretty strong shadows in this area. Sorry if you can hear my, my dog in the background being a little rambunctious. And that's the beauty of live TV. I should say live internet. I think. 
So we've got, this is a bit more triangular, but it comes almost all the way down to the edge of the face there. Now I'm going to use my eraser and kind of shape this just a little bit more. Now let's go back up in here. I'm starting to see, I think I'm starting to see a likeness in there. That's kind of Christopher Plummer ish. What do you think? Okay. The eyebrows live in here somewhere. So I'm just gonna, just gonna block them in nice and dark. Okay, so this is too wide. Like this part of the face is too wide. So what I need to do is push this back into shadow, which will narrow it out. So I'm just gonna drop in some big block of shadow across here again. And then let's just, here's a, here's another tip. Here's a thing that I used to do a lot. Um, you, you tend to think you're drawing too light when you work on white paper. So I've got this on white paper right now. Um, and you tend to think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you tend to think that your shadows are getting too dark, but the reality is you're drawing too light. Um, you need to get the shadows darker in order to create uh, the the feeling of three-dimensionality. Um, so one way that you can kind of combat that is to not draw, not draw on white paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this. I'm not gonna draw on white paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my layers, which is right over here on the bottom of the toolbar. And this right here controls the background color for uh, sketchable. So I'm going to grab just kind of a middle 50% gray in there. And that's what I'm now going to draw with. It'll help me kind of judge my tones better. It also means that we don't have to really work on uh, midtones. Midtones are already built in. So now we can work on shadow and highlight and kind of create the shapes and the forms that we need to see without thinking about what needs to be in the middle. Uh, and this will also allow us to uh, fix more easily fix some of these proportion issues that I've got going on right here. So this right here is too narrow. It's too short. Uh, his, his upper lip is quite a bit longer. Uh, his, his face is broke up into thirds, uh, fairly proportionally as far as I can see. Let me measure real quick. Yeah, it's, it's pretty proportional. But I don't have that same that same proportion going on here. So what I need to do is I need to bring the head up a little bit. It needs to be taller. So I'm just going to put in some shadow here that will help us with that later. And then I need to move his mouth down a bit. Um, so his chin needs to come down here a little bit more. So I'll add some shadow in there that'll help us with that. And we need to lengthen out this top lip. Now, I'm not going to grab the eraser to do that. What I'm gonna do, sorry if I keep uh, tilting away from this microphone, it kind of blocks my view of my drawing board. So I tend to try to look around it and it's awkward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna come in here and grab 
that gray color we were working with before, and I'm gonna to start to establish where this highlight lives. And we'll use that to set a new position for the mouth. I think it's gonna be somewhere in there. Now let's switch back to the black. And let's define that sweep of the mouth right there. That is why I say that digital is way more forgiving than traditional media because you can just draw over it and it doesn't leave a bunch of marks and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So makes it super, super easy. All right, so let's just define where that highlight is that will actually define the lower lip. Detail will come later. And then that highlight gives way roughly here to a nice dark line. And it doesn't go over quite that far. That dark line comes up like into here. All right, now we need to grab a couple of other colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to eye drop uh, that mid-tone and we're going to make it slightly lighter. Want it just barely lighter than the paper tone. And we're going to use that to help define some of these shapes. Now, this is where I also tend to get myself into a little bit of trouble. Um, sometimes I will try and dive into detail at this point, which is a bad idea because um, we don't need detail at this point. We still need to define shapes and planes and all of that kind of stuff. So you don't want to jump into detail here um, because it's going to uh, get you in trouble later. Ah, so uh, uh, Vicky says, I just need to learn sketchables better. Um, I'm old school with paper and pencil and smudging the pencil to do shadowing. Yes, um, that is a little bit of a mind bender when switching to digital. I had the same problem, like trying to switch to digital and telling myself, well, I need to be able to blend and I need to be able to do all these things. Um, it just takes a little bit of time to kind of learn where your tool sets are inside your digital digital space. So, for example, let me just uh, finish laying in 
that little bit of a corrective highlight right there. And I will show you the Blender tool. There, uh, the shading stump inside Sketchable works very much the same way that a real life shading stump would. So give me just a second and I will, I will show you how that works. All right, so there's a highlight there. There's gonna be a bit of a highlight that kind of comes up through here. And then one that comes right down through here. And this is gonna help us create the planes of the nose here. At least the highlight planes of the nose. And there is a highlight that runs like right there. It kind of pushes that nose that way. And then this shadow, I think, needs to come this way just a touch. Okay, so let's let's take a Debbie Wynn, hey, how you doing? I hope I said that last name right. Um, welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're finding something valuable here. Um, so let me show you that, uh, Vicky, let me show you that shading stump. So it's this tool here, the last on the uh, the um, toolbar. Uh, it's also, you know, referred to as the tortillion. Um, it works just like any other... Uh, any other shading stump, or, or sorry, any other tool in the toolbar, you've got your, your size, you have your flow, and you have your opacity, right? Um, the more opaque you make it and the more flow you make it, the more it will blend. And obviously the larger size, the more it will blend. So what I like to do is keep my flow at about 50% and then mess with my size and then what you can do is you can actually come in here and let me let me zoom in so you can really see the effect. You can just come in here and blend and shade just like you would uh, in the physical world. Okay. And then playing with playing with that size will allow you to shade smaller, tighter, you know, all of that kind of thing. So um, it's a tool that I use often, um, but I also, uh, I tend to, uh, since I use a pressure sensitive stylus, I tend to use the side of my pencil a lot, uh, and, and kind of create a shade like this, uh, that, so I, I don't use the shading stump quite as much as I, as I would in real life. So. Debbie, I have a drawing request. Here's how to get the image. Search SpongeBoy on Google, go on images and download, draw the first image that pops up. Okay, I might uh, have to take a look at that. Um, although I will admit it sounds like a trap. That totally sounds like a trap. All right, so let's continue to build out these shapes and forms here. Uh, so you can see when I what I meant when I when I said um, that sometimes I tend to dive into detail too soon. Um, so what's happening here is I'm working this area down here, and I've neglected this area up here. That always gets me in a little bit of trouble because if I don't draw the whole drawing all at once, uh, parts of the drawing tend to suffer. So I'm going to have to force myself here in a minute to go up and work on work on what's up up at the top as well. So. All right, let's start to define these highlight shapes that come up into here. Um, and uh, for Vicky, who was asking about the shading uh, stump, um, when I when I draw like this and I get a lot of really close small lines together, 
this is a perfect time to come in there with that shading stump and kind of blend all that stuff out. Um, it's a, it's a kind of a good way to do it. Um, all right, so let's grab that highlight and this highlight might actually be now that we've gone to a gray surface, this highlight might be too bright. Like it just might be too, too much, too much white. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit larger here. And just start to work in some of these highlight planes here. All right, so one problem we've got right now is if you look at the shadow here and you look at the highlight there, the tip of the nose is facing towards us. The tip of his nose is here based on shadow. The tip of his nose should be here. Um, so what we're going to have to do is create, move the tip of the nose by creating the highlight that will force us over there. Um, and then we're going to have to bring some of that highlight off, off of the edge of the nose here. kind of blend some of that off so that the tip of the nose doesn't look like it's coming straight at us because it shouldn't be. Okay. So let's see, we've got, let's make this just a touch smaller. We got to define this line a little bit better. All right. Okay, I'm sure there's got to be more questions floating around out there. Right, so at some point in time, we have to make a decision as to where these eyes are. This is the part that always throws me. It's the part that always makes me second guess everything about the drawing. So uh, I have come up with my own way of doing this. So some people will tell you, you just come in here and you say, well, the eye is here. Here's where the eye lives. And it's like this, right? Some people will tell you that, and some people would be right. Uh, and that works for them. It does not work for me. I always get it in the wrong spot. I always get it too far away from the nose. It's always just a little bit jacked up. So the way I prefer to do it is to continue to define where all of these shadows and highlights are. See, now this one is not far enough down compared to that one which means that one's too low. And then I start to figure out like where all these shadows kind of converge on one another and where that convergence is 
is ultimately where the I lives. And it always looks funny and it always looks creepy. Like, I think I saw this guy in like Phantasm 1 through 27. Creepy ass dude that guy was. Okay, so this shadow here kind of has a deep spot right through there. And then it just kind of rounds off like this. So that's where the eye ends up living. Um, and then over here, it's got the same kind of situation. There's a shadow that kind of builds up. There's a shadow like right here. And then I don't ever draw eyelids. I just kind of indicate that they're there through shadow and highlight. And the eye looks like it lives somewhere in there. And this is too big. That pupil is too big. But don't, don't freak out. We'll fix that in a minute. It lives somewhere in here. And that one's way too big. That one's way too big. See, I'm kind of freaking out. I just said not freak out. And I'm freaking out. So the way that we fix that is we continue to shadow in until we get that shape right, this shape. I'm not talking about this shape. I'm talking about the pupil shape, this one. All I'm worried about is how much circle and how much wedge do I see. And once I can figure that out, then I can start to build out the, the shadows and the highlights elsewhere. Okay. The only question I'm having is related to what success I would be having if I were you. And I'm asking myself if I would feel compelled to stick with one shade of shadow before working with another. I think I would feel compelled, but I like that you aren't. You are free enough to allow yourself to see a bunch of things. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would say the same thing. Um, I, I don't necessarily say, think that I would say that I'm free enough to see a bunch of things. I think I've trained my brain enough to know that if I don't switch, if I don't change to something else, I'm going to end up making a mistake and I'm going to end up messing it up. And so switching is more a function of, of 10,000 hours of practice uh, more than anything. All right, so there is a bit of a highlight that runs right through here that establishes where that waterline on that lid is. So I'm going to put that in. We'll darken that off in a bit. And then there's a little bit little bit of an upper eyelid right through there and the upper eyelid kind of closes in on itself just a little bit in this area so we'll play with that that's going to take some time to get right it's all in the details
All right. See, this is another point where when I was much younger and less experienced, I would quit because I feel like this eye right now is just horrifically wrong. Um, and in the past, I would just give up and just say, I, I no good at this, but, uh, keep at it, practice more. Because you realize that it's not the first stroke you make is not going to be the best stroke in the world. It takes time to build up uh, the strokes that you need to make this look the way that it should look. And uh, digital digital drawing is a great way to go because it gives you a certain amount of freedom to feel like you can make mistakes and, and then, you know, learn from them and throw them away without wasting money or wasting, you know, paper or pencils or any of that, because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really take up any real physical space. So feel free to draw and draw and draw and draw. You don't have to show anybody. And you, you surely don't have to go stream it live like I am and show the world your mistakes. Um, but you do have to do it. You do have to practice and, and draw even when you don't feel like, like drawing, especially when you don't feel like drawing, you should draw because it's usually when I don't feel like drawing that I, that I do some really great work. Okay, so now is about the point where I will start to uh, I'll start to get smaller and smaller with my my pencil size, um, because now I'm I'm going to begin to kind of start doing more strokes that are going to define detail. This is also the part where I start to add more shades of pencils um, so that I can get a more diverse set of tones um, so that I can build in a lot of nuance in the drawing.
see this highlight kind of chops a little bit more. It's kind of more square. It's a bit sharper there, so. that adjustment real quick. Okay, let's see. Uh, we need some highlight area here. This part's a little bit low. I remember we moved that line up a bit. Okay, so here's another, uh, another quick tip. When you're, when you're drawing digitally, it's really easy to do this and kind of look at a thumbnail view and see where things might be a little bit weird. Uh, so this is also the stage where I start doing that and start looking at where those highlights and shadows are and how to kind of, you know, adjust where they sit. Okay, and there's a fair bit of highlight here, and then that runs right up here. Kind of breaks this plane a little bit. And then there's a little bit of a very subtle, subtle highlight that runs through here. Let's make this a little larger so we don't have to do so many strokes.
All right, let's grab this shadow again. Right, uh, pull that down just a touch. So you can see earlier, um, we knew this wasn't tall enough. I still think this might be just a touch short, but I'm not going to try to fix it this time around. I might might do it when I do the shadows into this lip. But we, we also elongated the chin by just drawing a big shadow across there. So now I'm coming back in with this mid-tone um, to where I can, I can kind of push that chin a little longer uh, and kind of get the chin that more or less he kind of has. And start to define those highlights and stuff as they, they come down the face. All right, so what do you think so far? We getting there? All right, so these highlights feel a little strong. So let's kind of push these back. And then this shadow doesn't feel quite strong enough.
Uh, Natalie, yes, I will. I will take this all the way to completion, regardless of when I stop live streaming. Um, but right now I'm having a good time. And so I think I'm just going to keep, keep drawing, keep streaming. YouTube doesn't kick me off at any time. So, uh, we'll just keep, keep going. All right, so uh, I get a lot of questions about eyebrows uh, and how I draw eyebrows. So I'm gonna tackle those here in a minute. If you're interested, stick around. All right, let's make this way smaller and try to define that where that bottom waterline goes. You know, I don't spend a lot of time working on eyes. Um, I tend to just kind of shade them in fairly dark. And uh, I find that trying to do a ton of detail for eyes is really kind of a waste of time. There's a few things that make eyes look like eyes. The majority of that happens to be the highlights that are in the eyes. Um, so I don't spend a ton of time trying to draw detail in the eyes. This eyelid is, uh, going to be a bit of a challenge to make look right. I think, I think I'm going to have to play with that one quite a bit. First thing is there is actually... A little bit of the whites of the eyes that you see right there. It's not quite that bright. And then this becomes a fair bit more shadowed quicker. When I was uh, younger and a bit less experienced at this, I used to think it was all about what you drew. The drawing was all about what you drew. Um, but 
I can tell you that a drawing is just as much about what you don't draw as it is about what you draw. Um, sometimes negative space is far more important than, than the detail you put there. Um, I say that because of the eyes, like these aren't quite ready for this yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it anyway and I can kind of play with it later, but eyes become real, uh, when they have highlights in them. Um, it's not about drawing the pupil and drawing all of the detail of the pupil. They become real when they have highlights. Um, so you can see just how those, those couple little spots of light uh, in there change the way they feel. And then how you blend them matters as much as how, what shape they are. So like I said, it's not about the, it's not about the detail of the eye. It's about the, uh, it's about what you, what the brain sees. It's about what, uh, what you put there influences how the brain perceives things. Um, case in point, these eyebrows, uh, we, all we've done so far is just define a big mass for these brows, right? Um, but if we come in here and I'm going to make a small pencil, a lot of flow, because I want to make quick strokes that show up and not have to draw them more than once or twice. So his eyebrows are very strong with gray hairs. So we don't have to draw all the dark hairs. We just have to indicate that they're there. And then draw the highlights of the gray hairs. If you do this in the right mass, you will all of a sudden have an eyebrow. Now I'm going to go back here and reduce my flow again because I want some that aren't quite as white to kind of peek up into here. And then over here, because of the way the light is, they're not quite as, not quite as white. And he's got a few that like are literally growing on the bridge of the nose. So we'll pop those in. about like so. And that's typically all that I will do for eyebrows.
So this is also the point where I, I stop trying to follow the, the reference material quite as much because you're never going to get it to match, right? It's never, you're never going to draw exactly what, what the photo looks like. And quite frankly, why would you, um, like you have a camera for that. Um, you, you should draw, you should draw details that, that put your own style into something. And so I start to deviate quite a lot from the source material and start focusing on how do I want it to look? How do I want it to be? But I usually only deviate from the source material once I know that I have, I have the likeness that I want. Um, once I feel like I have a likeness there and that you can recognize who this is in this portrait, uh, then I, then I deviate quite a lot. Everything's still sounding okay out there. I'm getting some notifications from YouTube that the audio is too low. Audio's fine on your end, Natalie. Okay, great. YouTube is just a dirty, dirty liar. Uh, let's tuck that lip, that bottom lip, just up into that shadow a little bit more. Was everybody uh, everybody out there in YouTube land watching alone, or we'd have any watch parties anywhere? Oh, thank you, Natalie. Appreciate that. A 
Sophie was watching but had to go. Yeah, early morning suck. Okay, so uh, another quick tip. Um, this is the part where you're like, oh, it looks sort of good, but also at the same time sort of bad, and I'm not sure why. Um, the reason why, in my opinion, uh, that I keep looking at this right now and saying this kind of looks bad is because I have not yet established a background. Everything is – so the highlights are looking too bright – and my shadows are looking out of place because they're too dark. Well, that's because I don't have a background in here. So don't panic. Uh, at some point in time, you'll have to draw in a background to make everything feel like it it fits the way it should. Um, but if you get to that point where you're th saying to yourself, this just looks funky, that's the reason why. And I totally just drew in there with the wrong tone. It's too bright. So now we got to tone it back. The right tones. And let's make this wider, way less flow. And we can just kind of shade over that and tone it back quite a bit. So we need to do a little work down here at the chin. This is way too dark. Um, and then I feel like this right here is not dark enough. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, Natalie, it's, it's, it doesn't look finished because it's not finished. That is a fair point, but, um, I'm just trying to call out all of the, the, the gotchas that I know I've experienced that make me always feel like, oh, I've totally, I've totally messed this up. Like I've made this mistake. Um, I don't want you to, to look at this and, and trick yourself into thinking that you have failed because you totally haven't like it just needs to you just need to keep going Okay, this right here, this highlight has a little bit of a reflected light. It runs up into there a little bit. And then there's just a skosha reflected light right in there. So Vicky, I know earlier you were asking about shading. Uh, you, I, I could totally come in here with the with the digital stump and and shade this out. One thing that I do is I tend to uh, 
I tend to do this push pull thing where I go, oh, well, here's, here's some tone. And then I got that too bright. So let me just come back with a really low flow, dark pencil and kind of fade that off. Right. So, so that's one of the techniques I use for blending digitally. I find it to be faster. Um, the other thing I don't like about the, the digital stump is if you zoom in here, all of this texture that's coming from the pencil, um, the digital stump eliminates that texture. And I kind of don't like that. I don't know why I just don't. Um, I think it's because I have a hang up over digital looking to digital. Um, and, uh, the texture kind of helps hide the fact that this is digital. Um, so I, I, I tend to not use the shading stump for that reason. All right. So let's, let's get a little bit serious here about putting in some of these other tones that we need. So let's grab a really light gray. And let's say this is where the shirt lives. And there's some highlight for the shirt here. It kind of fades off. There's another large section of highlight right here. I am not going to draw the stripes, mostly because I feel like being lazy about that detail. But if you want to draw stripes, draw stripes. Be my guest. Knock yourself out. Okay, so uh, earlier, I believe it was Natalie asked if I would, you know, do another layer uh, on top of this layer. Um, one thing about that is sometimes people get reluctant to draw dark lines when they know they have to draw in light color. Um, but there's always a shadow somewhere. Right, so um, these dark lines that are right here, I'm actually gonna use as the basis of the shadow that comes around this area. So I don't have to worry so much about hiding them on another layer, if that makes sense. Plus, if you get rid of, um, if you get rid of those shadows, the, the drawing tends to look very flat. And just, uh, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't have that kind of realistic quality that you might think that it should have. And I know I am not there yet, but my aim is to be kind of a hyper realist when it comes to art. Like I, I want my art to look realistic. And that's mostly because when I, when I, uh, when I do sci-fi stuff or, you know, dragon paintings and things of that nature, which I enjoy, um, I, I want those things to, to convincingly be real. I want people to think, oh my gosh, that exists somewhere. So that's why I just always pursue a somewhat hyper-realistic look. But I am a lifetime away from being a good hyper realist for sure got a lot a lot more hours to put in to be a hyper realist all 
All right, see, this is one of those times where I should have hid the tool because I just went off and changed the color. I keep tapping it, trying to make it black, and it's not black, and it was kind of taking me off a little bit. All right, let's establish the shadows here. This right here is the other major benefit of working digital. Um, you can get as close as you really need to get to make your details what you need to make them. Now, I always like to work this part of a drawing really loose. I don't like putting a lot of detail into these areas of the drawing because I want you to look up here. I want you to look at his face, not at his collar. Um, so I tend to, to avoid doing large areas of detail when you get down into these, these sections. Um, It just seems silly to draw a whole bunch of detail for an area you don't want someone to look. Okay, so there is a highlight back there where a little bit of light comes in from behind his head. And then there's a very subtle highlight that runs right across to here all the way back. A little bit of reflected light, I think. So uh, when I was learning a while ago, a uh, number of years ago, someone said something to me that made a ton of sense, and I'd never thought about it before, and I want to bring it up here. Um, hopefully it'll make sense and, and feel like it fits the context of this, this drawing. Um, your, uh, when you're drawing drawings with with this kind of tonal range and tonal values your 
lightest darks, let me make sure I say this right, your lightest darks must be darker than your darkest lights. If you get that wrong, so like this right here, I have made too bright in this area of the drawing. Um, it is brighter now than than the 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 bright areas over here. So in order for that to to kind of fit in properly, it needs to be the right amount of light um, on this little area of the earlobe here. And so I need to push this back. It's too bright. Um, but if you want, if you don't want your drawing to be flat, then then you need to think about it in terms of how bright is my brightest brights and how dark are my brightest darks. Uh, you know what I mean? Because you want you want bright highlights, but you also want darks that have depth to them. And so you kind of have to very carefully balance those out. Okay, so, so that I'm not sitting here totally silent while I draw this, um, uh, I know that both Natalie and Vicky are subscribers on the Patreon channel. Uh, appreciate your support. Um, what creative projects have you worked on lately? What kinds of projects are you doing?
So Vicky was working on some jewelry and some glass, stained glass. I I, th I believe you do. Yeah. Um. Do you do you have a website? And if you don't have a website, that's something you should remedy right quick. Okay. Uh, let's see, Natalie, I've been working with drywall yet again and paint also yet again. Had quite the issue with my paint today. <clears throat> I didn't water it down as I like to do and it went on flexible like I don't like. Yeah, flexible paint sucks, especially when it gets sticky. Yeah, when I tried to remove my tape, I had a mess. Yep, I, I totally get what you're talking about there. It's just a hobby, she says. I don't have time to do much. Um... Totally get that. Totally get that. Uh, that's usually why I'm doing my live streams late at night because I don't usually have time to do much either. Let's establish this ear a little better. Feels like the wrong size. See, top of the eyebrow. It's going to be like right there, which means we're going to have to move the coat yet again. Not by much, but enough. Uh, let's grab the eraser real quick. Clean that line up. Anybody that's ever finished their basement knows that that is a pain in the rear. Shouldn't shouldn't do it unless you are ready for uh, a pain in the ass. All right, I think that ear is passable for now. I'll play with it more later, I think. But passable for now. Okay, so I've been neglecting this forehead forever. Oh, it feels like I need a need to take a drink break here real quick. It's 
So Vicky, when you draw, you draw digitally, you draw traditionally, and I forget what it is you draw on. You have a surface, right? And Natalie, what do you, what do you usually draw on? I have actually been to some, uh, in-person, uh, sketch sessions with Natalie, um, in recent past. Um, she likes to tell people she d can't draw, but I've seen some drawings from her that are quite good. So don't let her fool you. Same thing with Vicky. I've seen some drawings of hers that are quite good. So she tells you she doesn't know how. Oh, excuse me. Call her a liar. See, she just told me I, I lie. She just said it right there in the comments. She can, I've seen her draw. She can draw. She's just being critical of herself. As most uh, artists are, because they think they have to be as good as everybody else. And that's just not the case. You only have to be better than you were yesterday. That's it. It's the only person you're competing with is yourself and you only have to be better than you were yesterday. So, um, don't, don't sell yourself short. So I, so Natalie has this skill for, uh, I think, I think it was your, I've been in her home a few times. Um, uh, she has a an awesome bathroom where she redid all the walls with uh, I believe it was a was maps like globe type maps. Um, it's quite cool, and so she has quite the artistic bent of her own. And I have to say for the world to hear that I have very much appreciated Natalie. She's supported, she supported my art for longer than I can remember and uh, has supported me on Patreon uh, for quite some time now. And I appreciate her to the moon and back twice. Hold on just one second here. I'm going to just turn that reference off because I'm not using it much anymore. 
um, just kind of drawing. Yeah, Natalie's bathroom is quite cool. Uh, like I never would have thought of using old like National Geographic stuff as wallpaper. Like it, it's quite, quite an interesting and unique idea. And I think it works very well. So you should, uh, you should hop over onto the Patreon page since you are a subscriber and post some links. Post them in the comments of this live stream. It's actually happening over on the Patreon page now. You should post some links to some of your stuff. I'm sure everybody over there would love to see them. Natalie, if you don't have links, you should make some. You should photograph it, put it on your IG, and share. You uh, deserve the recognition for cool projects that'd be inspiring to a lot of people. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, accentuate this a little bit more. Okay, um, next tip. Sorry, this drawing is going on for a long while and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm kind of getting, kind of getting lost and forgetting to, to share tips with you guys. So. Skin texture. How do we handle skin texture? This is an old dude. He's got a lot of texture in his skin. Um, how do we how do we make that look realistic? Here's how I do it. Doesn't always work. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to get a really small brush, and I'm going to get a fair amount of flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into shadow areas and I'm going to create some strong brushes, a little too small. 
I'm going to create some strong indications of large pores in these shadow areas. The tricky part is being random enough with these strokes so they don't line up and look strange. And then I'm also going to put in some fairly strong kind of interrupter lines across some of these highlights. can do the same thing over here. Now, I don't do too much of it in the shadow areas. Just enough to hint at it. That's all we really need is a few little hints. And up in here, we're going to Draw some crease lines and different things like that to indicate weathered, aged skin. And I can keep playing with that up there. But the real trick is the highlights. So we're going to take this tone and we're just going to... Oh, that tone is a little bit too bright. So let's go with this tone. We're going to just drop in Yeah, you're going to have to fix that, Natalie. Come on. I'm going to try to be really random with these little marks that I'm making. And I want them to be, some of them dots, some of them slashes, some of them lines. And go all kinds of different directions. Okay. Um, this is This is how I indicate or create the texture of skin. You can also do this with the eraser. Um, if you are still drawing on white, you could do it with the eraser. Since I'm drawing on gray, I tend to use uh, gray or, or a slightly brighter than gray color to to try to pull this off. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like I said, sometimes it just makes it look quick and almost cheap a little bit, I guess you could say. Um, when I worked with the uh, airbrushing, uh, which I did for a number of years, you would actually do this with a... Uh, with an X-Acto knife, you would scratch back into the paint 
to create these kinds of textures and lines and and different uh, different indicators of of skin texture and pores and just all kinds of things. So I'm going to make this a little smaller and then increase my flow. So um, over the course of this drawing, I started out very big um, with very large brushes. And over time, we went smaller and smaller and smaller until we got to the detail. And now we're to the point where we're we're just gonna lay in a fair amount of detail in just very random ways. Because that detail mixed with you know various textures and highlights and all of that kind of thing is what's going to make this drawing feel more realistic. And we're not actually drawing detail. We're just hinting at it and we're getting uh, the viewer to fill in the gaps. We want the viewer's eye to tell them there's something here. When there really isn't anything there. See, Natalie says, uh, I totally agree with you on the texture not getting blended out. The further you go, the more I love the texture. Yeah, the texture um, <clears throat> with digital, it can often feel way too smooth, way too uh, digitally created. And uh, that's very off-putting for me, especially since I tend to print a lot of my art on paper. Um, I'm printing more and more of it on, on metal. Uh, but when you print a lot of your art on paper, when it doesn't have the texture in the drawing, it, it kind of feels a little bit odd the way that it comes out. So, um, all right, so let's, let's add some, let's add some quick detail. Let's make this a little bigger, less flow and add just some quick detail to these lips. real quick and then we'll come back with a little bit of highlight see like I said it doesn't take a lot of uh, doesn't take a lot of I am drawing details to make something look detailed. But that could be me being lazy. It could also be uh, the reason that I probably won't ever be reach a hyper realistic stage in my art. All right, so I'm taking a quick glance back at the uh, source material here, and I don't see any eyelashes. So I don't, I'm not going to take any time to draw those. I do see a few. Let's make this a little bigger. do see a few kind of interrupter shadows that run through there, and a few here as well. So let's throw those in. And then throw in some more highlights along with it.
right, so I want to push back. This is too far forward, so I'm going to push that highlight back, that little white of the eye. And there needs to be a broader range of shadows right here. And that kind of fixes my eyelid problem that I was having earlier. And then this right here, there is actually a kind of dark line. separates those two and pushes that eyelid back a little. Slightly bigger brush. And I actually think that eye is a little too large. So let's shallow it up. Make it a little smaller by adding a little more highlight there. And a little more there. Now let's push all those back. The highlight on that lid should not be that bright, so we're going to push that back, drop that shadow in a little bit more. And then run this highlight a little bit more this way. There we go. It's a little better. That highlight might be a Let's go too bright. This too. All right, now let's see. I want to highlight here and here. Add a little something there. Now these are usually my brightest highlights in the drawing is in the eye. Um, and I like to, even if my source material doesn't have it, I like to add just a touch of a bright highlight right at the waterline. Just right there. Gives it just a little bit of life in that eye. And then I might kind of blend that off just a touch. Okay, whoa, a lot of comments. Um, Uh, the only thing I see it looks a little out of proportion to me is the left eye to me seems a little open. I think it's arched a little too much in the middle. Could be wrong. What do you think? Um, no, I think you were right. Uh, that's why I was kind of working on that. I think that left eye feels better to me now. And so does the right because they were both open a little bit too much. This right eye still might need a little bit of, little bit of work. But I think it's... Uh, it's probably good enough for the girls I go out with. Um, still need a little bit of a uh, little bit of texturing up here in the forehead area. Make this blend in a little bit. Oh, good. Uh, great minds think think alike. Apparently, we both saw the same same flaw. Put 
a little more texture down in here, blend this in a bit. Okay, let's see. I'm super fond of the dark shadow on his forehead and think you should carry that down his face a little bit. I'm assuming you're talking about this dark shadow here. Right up in this region. Um, yeah, you're probably right. Like that, uh, whoa, that texture or, or that, that, that value could probably come down into this area a bit and carry because it does looking at the source material it does look like it uh there's a bit of a darker shadow across here and it kind of blends out into this cheek area here just a little bit more I feel like this highlight right here might be a little much too. Like it's it's just screaming at me right now. So let's push all of those back just a bit. Pull back the highlights a bit, push back the shadows a bit. So so my technique for this so let's look at my flow. Right now I've got a flow of 5.6 and I have a size of about 60. If I draw over here, this is full pressure on my stylus. This is hardly no pressure on my stylus. So this gives me the ability to really kind of uh, blend those shadows down without... Um, without like really losing a lot of the detail that I've, that I've built with the highlights. So I can just kind of push them back by not putting a lot of pressure on them. So. Okay, let's see here. Um, the tricky part is going to be pushing these shadows enough that they don't overpower the highlights that are in there and uh, not, uh, not make it look out of place. Let's see if we can get a little heavy handed with some of those. Let's see if we can push them back just enough. Push this ear back a little bit too. Okay, Natalie, what do you think about that? Maybe bring some of these darks over here too. Oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Paige Gardner, welcome. Um we've been drawing for a while. A couple hours now, I think. So welcome. Uh, I always admire people who can draw portraits in realism. Well, I, uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure if you're 
referring to me and drawing portraits in realism, but I'm going to assume that you are and say thank you. Um, I'm working hard at uh, getting better at it. So, um, let's see, Vicky says, I agree. He's hard on himself when he said he doesn't draw it realistic enough, looks realistic to me. Uh, kind words. But uh, for full disclosure, uh, uh, Vicky is actually my mom, so she's required by law to say say stuff like that. So, and yes, I get I get my drawing talent from her. So don't let her fool you into thinking that she's no good at this either, because she is absolutely amazing. And needs to uh, spend more time doing it because she would rock the world. Okay, so now we need to draw the hair. It almost feels like it's... Uh, kind of a formality at this point to draw the hair, but let's do it. There is a dark, let's put in a dark shadow here that runs up this way. Age Gardener, I'm about to go back to college for art education and subconsciously avoid realism or the human form unless it's eyes. Paige, I totally feel you there. Like, I, I get what you mean when you say that. Um, I spent the better part of 10 years avoiding portraiture altogether. All I drew was like skulls and dragons and flames and, you know, all of that very testosterone driven stuff. And I realized that I was avoiding all of the things that I thought were hard um, because I wanted to artificially make myself feel like I was really good. Um, but every time I would try to draw something hard, I felt like I had failed. So I have spent the last four years doing uh, at least a portrait every single month. Um, and I started picking uh, people like Christopher Plummer here uh, because they're way harder to draw uh, when they're, when, when, you know, the, the portrait is older and has a lot more detail in the skin and different things like that. Way harder to draw for me than, than someone who's young. So I've been almost exclusively focusing on older portraits for the last few years, trying to brush up on the skills and get everything looking the way I feel like they need to be. But I would encourage you to not avoid it. Just go for it. There's no, uh, there, there are no mistakes. All you can do is learn, uh, ways not to do things. Right. So there are no mistakes. There's only opportunity for learning. And that's, that's, that's all there is to it. Like just dive in, draw it, be better every time you do it and you'll master it in no time. Okay. So hair, how do I draw hair? Well, I learned a technique a long time ago, uh, for hair and it has served me well. So what I'm doing is just laying in the shadow portion I'm going to blend this line out just a little bit with this slightly lighter color. And then let's, uh, let's actually erase that little lump right there. And I'm going to clean up this side. I will show you. So the mistake a lot of people make when they draw hair is they think of hair as individual hairs, right? Uh, and it's not, it's not even close. Um, the better way to think about drawing hair is to think about it as masses or uh, ribbons 
Um, especially if you're drawing like curly hair or something like that. There's, it's just a lot of ribbons. Um, but what I do is I tend to, so I'm going to make a small brush, uh, fairly, fairly high flow. Um, and what I do is I now have all this shadow tone in here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to draw, let's make that just a little bit larger real quick. I'm just going to draw the shadow areas of the hair as I want to see it. And then I'm going to switch to my highlight. And instead of drawing every single little hair, all I'm going to do is draw where that highlight will live in the hair. So we draw it as, as masses of hair instead of individual strands of hair. And you want to make sure that you do it with shape and form. Okay, and it looks kind of funny in the beginning, but trust me, it'll get there. So we're just going to draw those, those forms in here. And we're going to fill them in. Same thing up here. There's a fair amount of form to the hair here. and a fair amount of form up in here. Okay, looks kind of looks kind of weird, but I promise you we'll get there. I haven't steered you wrong so far. So, now what we're going to do is grab this going to make this make this flow fairly high and we're going to make this small and we're going to grab our highlight tone and we're now going to indicate where the kind of individual hairs are in this mass of hairs And again, I'm not, I'm not drawing individual hairs. If you come in here and look, I'm just kind of scribbling back and forth, almost like I am on a scratch board of some sort and just kind of wanting to indicate where these highlights are in this mass. And then I'll go back to the dark tone and I will do the same thing over the top. Just trying to indicate where that hair will live. Then we'll come into with the mid-tone, we'll get a little bit bigger, a little less flow, and blend. And we'll go back and forth doing that until we feel like we've got it, got it right. Until it feels like hair. Now up here, let me turn my, uh, I think I turned my reference drawing off. Let me turn that back on for you. Up here, the hairs are a little bit more, a little bit more wispy. 
few more like individual hairs. So unfortunately, we have no choice but to draw those individually. But I'm going to show you what drawing them individually kind of does and why it looks weird. So if we come in here, this all looks incorporated, all looks together, right? This has gaps. Everything is gapped out. And so it looks odd. So one trick for that is to come in here with your darker tone and kind of overlay over top of it. Grab that darker tone there. Kind of darken this part out. Just a little bit. Doesn't need a ton. Needs just a little. And then we'll go back to that highlight tone. go back over that uh, that more medium tone that way we can kind of make it feel more incorporated Now, this hair that's on this side of his head, um, it's a little bit blurry. It's a little out of focus in the photograph. So we can either draw it the way I am, nice and sharp, in focus. Or we can grab our shading stump. We can add quite a bit of this to it and oh, let's make that a little smaller and then we'll just oh, a little smaller even still we'll just go across that just a little bit up and down short short motions kind of blend it off And then we'll go back and add a few more detailed pieces there. All right, so now we've got a problem here. His head's rounding off a little bit too much over here. So, how are we going to fix that? The head needs to come up this way a little more before it rounds off that way.
a little better. Not great, but a little better. One way we can fix it is just to add a little more hair. And then push the hairline back. Okay, now, what do we do? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, now you're bringing up first grade. That's great. That's, yeah. I think I actually still have that painting. I think that's still kicking around here somewhere. Um... I do have to say you're inspiring me to draw something again. Yeah, you should. You should. Get out a sketchbook and draw anything. doesn't matter what it is. It just needs to be. Just draw it. The coat looks like a dress coat. Makes him look far classier than the original puffer jacket. I can see that. I can see that. Um, what I'm going to do for the coat is kind of a cop out. I am just going to, I'm just going to indicate where all the shadows are. Mostly because this drawing has been going on for quite some time already. That I am just going to keep the coat real simple. And I don't even know that I will fill it in all the way. May just kind of leave it with this kind of sketch quality. Something like that, maybe. Sometimes I, I, I've, I've been kind of forcing myself to do this every once in a while. Uh, because I uh, aspire to be a hyper-realist, I sometimes force myself to draw every single detail. You guys have been following me on Patreon. You know that I've been working on this dragon painting for like a year and a half now because I'm so obsessed with all the details, um, which is great. That's fine. But every once in a while, you just need to, you just need to do something uh that you finish to feel kind of accomplished at something. Um, and so every once in a while I've been challenging myself to kind of do something that has a little bit more of a drawn or kind of painterly quality to it. Um, and forcing myself to leave these types of strokes that you're seeing right now in the drawing. Um, not that I've ever had a drawing be accused of being a photograph. Uh, you can always kind of tell it's a drawing or a painting, but I, I, I do always feel like it's, it's a little bit of a challenge to to myself to try to 
just leave some details undone. There's the dog. The neighbors must be home. He barks like a madman every time someone comes home next door. Sorry about that. Sorry, I think I think I got him to stop barking. Hmm. Not a super fan of that part right up there. So let's uh, let's pull that down a little bit. I think I went a little too high there. I should probably be more like that. Not like so. Well, what do we think? I think it needs a background. I think we need to add a layer. So let's pop up a layer. I'm going to put it below this one, if I can, maybe. Oh, come on. Let's maybe use the mouse instead of my stylus. Sorry, typing with one hand left-handed is not my strong suit. All right, what should we do for the background? Maybe just a slightly deeper gray. Let's, uh, let's grab that color. Let's darken it up.
let's see what it would look like if we just did like a modeled a modeled gray kind of backdrop blending tool will help us with this a lot hmm maybe I don't like that at all Probably should have done this background quite a while ago. But here is another major benefit of digital layers. I think I want to do a slightly darker section. Um, the source material has some kind of blurred background, so let's just take the airbrush tool, make it very large, bring its opacity down, and we should be able to create similar kind of model background look now this is making a very large assumption that I actually have all of this canvas on the upper layer painted through so that I don't end up with some of this airbrush bleeding out Now let's just uh, darken those corners a little bit just to see. All right, how do we feel about that background? Love it, hate it, hate it worse than most. Let's switch back over to my drawing layer real quick. I wanna work on this coat just a little bit more.
this is the part where I always start to question whether going loose and fast with something like the jacket helps the drawing or hurts it. It almost feels like it hurts it. So I feel like these highlight areas that I left pull too much attention away from the face. So maybe I'll just darken these in. Push them back a little bit. Take a little bit off of the shadow there. Okay, I'm just gonna put a few, just a few minor highlights here. Okay, well, Looks like almost three hours later. Yep, we've been streaming almost three hours. Looks like this one is pretty close to done. It's got its issues. It's got a couple of little weird uh, issues. Like this uh, cheekbone probably should have played in here more. We can narrow that out a bit. That helps. Yeah, it helps. It's not great, but it helps. Um, okay, well, I think I'm done. I think it is time. I think it's time to sign this. Let's check. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good pretty good mark.
There we go. Well, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me for the last three hours. That was cool. Um, thanks for the questions. I appreciate it a ton. And again, if you uh, if you are supporting me on Patreon, I appreciate your support completely. Um, I uh, I can't tell you how much that uh, just that little that little stamp of approval means uh, to have someone who uh, follows you and, and enjoys your your art. And uh, so, thank you very much. Um, gives it inspires me a lot and it makes me uh want to create more art and teach more things as i do so um thanks again and i will uh hopefully see you in the next stream so enjoy your evening